Carolina. Welcome to my garden. Today I thought I'd do a different kind of video and I've been um, going back down through memory lane lately and in doing so I also um, went back and looked at some of my old square foot gardening videos and so I wanted to just um, highlight some tips and tricks from that garden series. They weren't the best quality videos but there was a lot of information in there and I thought it'd be fun just to kind of show a clip from my old garden and so keep in mind the videos are not that great but when I um, show the video clip I'll put down the uh, square foot garden video um, number because when I recorded those I put down Donna square foot garden I would put like part one or part 50 or whatever it was it, there were only 50 videos so um, here you go here's your first tip I'm, I'm gonna limit this to five even though I have a lot of them so if you guys like this I can do another five in another video so the first tip and something that I like to do a lot and you can see it all through my videos um, was that I would take a little stocking um, and I would wrap that around my fruit like tomatoes and peppers and that would protect them from the insects and and it would also disguise them from the birds so they wouldn't know what they were and so that really helped me out a lot and I'll show you some video footage um, from the old garden. At least one good beef steak that I can pull. I had this on here to protect it from the birds since I didn't wrap it up in the netting. I'll go ahead and pull it too. And here's one of my tomato plants. I've tied these in little footy hose to try to protect them from the birds and let those ripen up a little bit. Greek tomato here that I cannot wait to eat. It's wrapped up in a little footy stocking because I want to protect it. And I've covered up just about every one of my tomato clusters. I, I notice every time I don't, once it's red, it's gone. Little birds and squirrels know exactly where to get their tomatoes around here and that's my garden. When I started doing that, I um, picked up a box of little, I guess you call them footies, from a shoe store because you know how you try those on when you are trying on shoes and I asked if I could buy a box and they gave me a box. So I was real fortunate that was um, really a free way for me to protect my um, garden fruit. And you know we always really want to have our tomatoes and peppers uh, that we work so hard to grow. <laughs> okay the second tip was basil. I think every new gardener and I was kind of a new gardener then, um, we all like to grow basil. And I lived in Florida so it was always sunny. I had a beautiful um, garden a growing season it was about probably 10 months long and so I had an irrigation system and so everything grew great especially basil so I would cut that off and prune it back all the time and I would keep it in my refrigerator but it seems like I always had some sitting on my windowsill also and before you knew it it would grow roots so I was so happy to show everyone how um, when you uh, grow roots on basil you can actually repot it and then I would give it out to friends family and neighbors and so here's a clip from that video also over here in my window you notice I have some basil uh, whenever I and I also have a beef steak tomato plant I'm just experimenting with some things here but I see I have a lot of roots that are growing on some of these and I'm just gonna repot these maybe give uh, a plant or two to some neighbors and um, maybe even have some more plants for myself. I have just some basil, potted basil plants that I'm probably gonna give out to the teachers and things like that um, around Christmas and some of the neighbors and just try to get them as big and healthy as I can. Now today I don't really um, do that with my basil too much because it um, bolts so quickly. <laughs> It'll just go straight to seed and I really like to just plant my basil from seed today because I really like the new growth. But I was a new gardener and um, I still today will not throw away a piece of basil if it has propagated. Let's say if I just put it in some water and then I check on it later and there it has roots, it will find a way in my garden somewhere. <laughs> okay, so my third tip is um, in the fall because I had a long growing season there, I would um, take my uh, tomato plants and I would uh, prune them down so that it would stimulate new growth and I would have fall tomatoes and that was something that I routinely did there but now I'm living in North Carolina in zone 6B so I don't really do that. I probably could if I really tried hard I could do something with a tomato plant and grow it in a container then move it indoors or something but I haven't quite taken that step but here's um, a clip from that video. I'm going to try to save some of these tomato plants. Um, what I've noticed a lot of these 
are doing is at the base there are new shoots coming out um, with blooms on them so I'm going to go ahead and just cut off on a lot of my tomato plants just above that stem and then maybe this latter part of the season I can start getting some tomatoes again and this will just be like the same tomato plant maybe it'll do even better now that the temperatures are kind of leveling off a little bit so I have three nice size beefsteak tomatoes on here and I also have some more blooms and this if you will remember from any of my previous videos was one of the tomato plants that I cut off the main stem and just let one green stem grow and then another tip was that one time I actually pruned a tomato plant on the top so I kind of almost topped it off because it was growing just so tall I was going on vacation and lo and behold when I got back from vacation two weeks later that tomato plant had just bushed out and just had taken over the bed and the grass that was on the outside of the bed and um, I had pretty much a tomato bush on my hands at that point so that was very fun to learn that I could do that and that I think that was in 2008 that was really early in my garden series so I went ahead and topped it off because it's getting too big it's, ex it's growing higher than my stake and I'm going on vacation soon, so I won't be able to take care of it. But wow, this tomato plant is just doing wonderfully. And I topped it off, but still, it's shooting off to the sides producing bloom. So, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get this little rascal to stop growing. Who's ever heard of that problem? But I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> and this is the Roma grape tomato plant that just keeps taking over and getting bigger and bigger. But... I actually topped this one off before I went to Greece on my vacation because I knew I couldn't get any taller than the stake that it was on. And then it just decided to bush out. So that's what I let it do instead of keep trying to train it up the stake. This is the Roma grape tomato plant that just keeps on putting out tomatoes. I'm not complaining. I probably am. Right now I'm getting about 20 of these a day. So um, we're having fun with the tomatoes. I was glad to be able to share that with all of you out there who've been following me since then. And hopefully those of you who knew my channel, you're learning something new from all these tips. And then now my final tip is that even now in North Carolina, when I, where I live in a colder climate, I will still dig up or take in my pepper plants over the winter. And I did that a lot in Florida. I would grow pepper plants in containers there and I really just had to keep those on my screened in porch to kind of protect them over the winter. Um, here I actually move them into my garage because we get really cold here. But I would also do that to tomato plants in Florida. So keep that in mind if you want to protect something over the winter give yourself some time about a month or two before you want to start taking it indoors because you have to harden it off and get it to adjust to its new climate just like you would if you had a seedling from indoors and you were moving it outdoors so keep that in mind for your pepper plants or your tomato plants if you're going to plan on moving them inside for the winter go ahead and start moving them in and out so here's a clip for where I talked about how it's going to move in my tomato plant this is a nice little Greek tomato plant. I put that in about a month and a half ago. It's doing well and I'll probably pull it out before it gets too cool. Maybe a couple months. Put him in a pot and keep him through the couple of cold months that we have. Keep him inside and then bring it back out and maybe I'll have a nice little Greek. This is a heirloom tomato seed that I grew that from. Okay, so I hope you guys like going down memory lane with me. Um, if you like this kind of video, let me know in the comment section below or give me a big thumbs up and um, feel free to share it on your favorite social media. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.